Oh, yeah. The first one. Morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Just uh, want to get on with a couple of reminders this morning. Uh, Tightening up. I want to hang out out of front in the morning and the afternoon. I simply can't do that with the situation we're in. I've got a lot of parents lately that are coming through the lot either in the morning or in the afternoon to drop off and pick up and see if there's a kid who's been calling into school. Uh, people are just worried about your health and safety. So, uh, take care of that issue. We just can't clump up and take off masks and all that kind of stuff in the mornings and the afternoons. I uh, also want to remind folks we do have a press code. You know, uh, it's a little weird kind of year and all that. Uh, things like that. You can't have blankets on the rooms. Uh, so we need to tighten up on some of that stuff. Unless you're at home. Have all the blankets you want. Can you guys hear me? I know you can, Mitchell. <laughs> Some of my cohorts like, yeah. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. 
Okay, guys, let's get started here. Again, you guys can hear me, right? Nod your head, nod your head. Okay, cool. Here to our agenda. There we go. All right, routine stuff. Grammar lesson eight posted needs to be complete by Thursday night. That was put up yesterday. Actually, that was put up today. It's due by Thursday night, yeah. Uh, vocab sections one through four, lesson four due by tomorrow night. Don't forget about that. I will remind you tomorrow. Uh, we're gonna talk through the think questions that you finished on the necklace and then move on to uh, a separate assignment still on the necklace on theme in class. Uh, I was thinking about maybe, maybe putting in breakout rooms for that. Might be a good idea. I kind of like doing that. And then uh, for homework, we're going to start a new assignment in Study Sync for uh, Sympathy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. It's a poem. Okay, kind of switching over. Um, I haven't actually posted that yet, but I'm going to ask you to uh, read and watch the intro page. Start a Google Doc to fill in the intro notes, copy from Access One, and annotate the poem. Okay, all those things should sound familiar, right? The kind of routine that we do with each piece, even with different kinds of literature. I'll let Avion in here. Okay. Um, can you guys please access your think question responses by going into study sync? I'll give you a minute to do that. And then I would love to hear from you and with some participation, of course. Getting back in there. You guys are able to access those, right? Can I get that figured out? Okay, cool. All right, so the first question was refer to one more details in the story to support your understanding of why Mathilde, is how you say her name, is unsatisfied with her life at the beginning of the story, both from ideas that are directly stated or ones that you infer. What'd you guys have for that? Let's talk. Yeah, I'll go ahead. Okay, can you hear me? Sure can. Okay, so for that one, I put the details of the story to support um, why she's unsatisfied with her life. It says in paragraph one, I'm sorry, I read that completely wrong. Um, the well, you're restating the question, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, um, so it states in paragraph one, so she let herself be married to a little clerk of the Minister of Public Instruction. This shows that she would much rather marry a rich man. Another detail that shows that she is unsatisfied is in paragraph three when it says all of those things of which another woman of her rank would never ever have been conscious tortured her and made her angry. This shows that she is very envious of other women and wishes that she that she had that life. Nice. Good details there. I like how you put a, a comment where it said let herself be married. It's an interesting wording where you can kind of infer that she feels like she has married down right and starts right off uh, with that there's some others too anybody have any maybe one other quote to kind of add to that maybe a little bit later or anything yeah kaylee the quote that i have is is that um she was distressed at the poverty of her dwelling at the bareness of the walls at the shabby chairs the ugliness of the curtains yeah, every, every little adjective that's describing uh, the, the way that the place looks, even though it's a narrator, right? This is, this is definitely like kind of a, a, a limited third person kind of narrator, right? So it's not Mathilde telling the story, 
but the narrator is with Mathilde the whole time and the narrator is able to kind of see into her thoughts because he's describing it through her eyes. Like those adjectives are what's going on in her and in, in her heart, right? Doesn't make her too sympathetic, but that's what's going on. Okay, that's good. Number two then, uh, what does Mathilde spend much of her time fantasizing about the beginning of the story? Why do you think uh, the author describes her thoughts so thoroughly as part of introducing Mathilde's character? That's just what we we're talking about, right? This might have overlapped a little bit. I think some of the descriptions that you just brought up kind of overlap with that, but uh, anybody else have anything to add in number two? Let's not have a two-person class now. I want to hear from others of you too. Patient wait time. Or I could just read all the ideal study sync answers if that would be interesting. If you guys just want to hear me like drone on, you know, reading the answers to a study guide. <laughs> that probably wouldn't be very fun, would it? All right, Ella, do you have something additional that we didn't already talk about there? Go ahead. Um, so for that question, I put, Mathilde spends most of her time fantasizing about being well, more well off and more richer in the beginning of the story. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, the Massapint describes the start so thoroughly as a part of introducing the character because he wants to give light on how ungrateful she is right now and what she has in life. And I think that this kind of helps start us to understand that she will have to work harder because she lost a necklace and she'll actually have to appreciate what she has in life. Okay. Also a lot about delicious dishes, right? That would populate her table if she was wealthy, kind of adds to that too, in addition to the descriptions that she has that we kind of touched on with number one. Okay, on a three then, now what kind of person is uh, Monsieur Loisel? We can just say Mr., right? Uh, and how does personality and character compare, or we might say contrast, right, to his wife's and support your answer with contextual evidence there. Let's please get someone new here. Let's talk, guys. Come on now. Alex, thank you so much. Go ahead. Um, and pause okay. for just a sec, folks. The rest of you, can we get our video on? Go ahead, Alex. If you want to be counted present. Um. He, he tries to please his wife as much as he can, even if it means he sacrifices the things he wants. As shown in the story that he says <laughs> he grew a little pale because he was laying aside just that amount to buy a gun and treat himself to a little shooting next summer. But, but he ends up giving those 400 francs to Mathilde so that she can buy the gown that she wants. Yep. So while he sacrifices himself for for his wife, she does not, which is what makes him different. Yeah, and she does not seem very grateful for the sacrifices that he's making, does she? So it's like he's selfless and, she, and she's selfish, it's hard to say. Um, yeah, and we definitely, he, he becomes more of a sympathetic character, right? Poor guy. It's like when you know someone who is married to or dating someone that just demands things all the time because they think they deserve better and the person who's nice doesn't get anything for themselves and never complains about it, right? That's pretty much who, pretty much who he is. All right, number four, use context to turn the meaning of the word rapture. I don't think we need to go over those or chagrin. Those are pretty routine questions. Uh, in this clip, how the students relate Mathilde's experiences to broader human experience. Well, that was Kristen. We, this kind of overlaps with the study sync TV we've already done, but Kristen and Monica explain how they've had similar experiences, right? On social media, they bring up, right? Includes a lifestyle, was a, a thing long before the internet. Right? And when Ethan says that people who show off their lives on social media want to be envied, Kristen brings it back to the story by saying so is Mathilde. So they make that connection there. Um, in seven, it asked, uh, in this clip, uh, Monica says that Mathilde's heroism is just about what she does. It's about how she does it. What a student cite in the text. Again, that overlaps with what we didn't study. Saying these are a little bit repetitive, I'm sorry. Same with eight. Okay, so let's just move on because I do want to get into the activity that we're gonna do uh, today and maybe put you guys into breakout rooms to do it if we have enough time. Let's see if we can here. Um, can you guys, if you're in study sync, can you go backwards to your assignments and see that there's a new assignment called theme on the necklace? Yeah, seeing that. Okay.
I'm not gonna dig real deep on this one. I'm not gonna do a bunch of excess handout stuff. I'm just gonna kind of do the main activity. Okay. So I think it would be easiest if I just paused here and you guys keep yourselves muted and go ahead and watch that video. It's not corny, it's not the least bit corny. It's not corny at all, I promise. The study sync video, do you believe me? <laughs> you don't believe me, do you? That's, that's, that's good, okay. Uh, so the passage here, theme is a central idea or message an author expresses in a work of fiction, poetry or drama. Sometimes an author explicitly, that means straightforwardly states a theme through a title, words, and a character, descriptive line. For example, a theme most fable is a state of right in a text is immoral. Usually though, themes grow and develop over the course of a text, but not directly stated at all. Certainly isn't here, right? In this case, you'll have to infer the theme. The author implies it, you infer it. When readers try to infer the theme of the story, novel, or play, they ask themselves, what is this really about? In other words, why did the author write it? Right? So the term theme can be used in different ways. It can refer to a broad theme dealt with the literary work. It can be expressed in a single word or short phrase. It can be a specific message about life contained in a literary work. And a specific theme is usually expressed in a sentence. Love conquers all, or it is courageous to go against the crowd. Um, but that would be kind of obvious, right? And the ones that are inferred are not stated as directly and straightforwardly as that. We have to more, like we said, uh, infer them. Okay, so we've got some bulleted notes here. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let you, let's see. I'm gonna let you guys just kind of attack this together here. Um, there is audio, okay? So you could use that, but I think I want to save time. So the assignment is to look and look at and read through that middle tab, and then to do the activity on the final tab. And I want you guys to try to work on this and hopefully do it, finish it, and answer it, each putting your own answers. It's just, it's an A, B, multiple choice set that you're gonna eventually see on that third tab. If you pop over there, you can already see that, okay? So look through it together, discuss it, and try to answer those together. It's not gonna be a correctness grade, but just do your best to try to get it correct. And then you guys have already seen what the homework is going to be, even though I know, even though I need to post that. I want to go ahead and kind of get into that now, and I won't give you as much work tomorrow night because we got the vocab and the grammar kind of hitting too. So let's hit the breakout rooms here. So you're just trying to read the middle tab, work on, and finish the activity on the last tab. All right. Let's see. Two here. I will go with four breakout rooms. And you guys just may do that. I don't, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pop in and out and see whether I wanna bring you back or not. We'll see how it goes, okay. There you go.
Do I just leave? Because everyone else left. Mr. Cooney, everyone yep. in my group left. <laughs> did, you, did you guys even make it through the assignment or everybody just bail no, on you? I, was like, I said, well, we can just like read it um, separately and then we can do the questions together. Yeah. And they just all left. Well, just, just make sure you do it. It's not like it's a, a real grade or anything. So I'm sorry okay. I didn't cooperate. Thanks for telling all me. All right. OK. Do you want me to leave now? Uh, have you done it? Um, I've I've read it on. I'm still working on the question. The two yeah, questions. yeah. I mean, you don't you don't have to stay in there. That's fine. Okay. All right. That's all.
Oh, did you guys come back? <laughs> you can go ahead and go as long as you finish those two things. I'm going to close. Uh, actually, I'll wait to close it up in case people are still working, but. <laughs>